Good day and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So, first thing that we're going to do uh, on a day of maintenance is go over the patch notes. Now, today is a very special patch note because it brought back the daily rewards. So, I'm going to go through it. I'm a little bit late on my patch note video, unlike every other week. So, this time I'm going to go over it quickly and I'm going to see what the actual changes are. I have read over it. Uh, basically before so let's go through it okay so the new features is um, uh, they've changed the exploit on uh, low bases in high secs so in a high sec uh, when you find your low bases one two three you can find an inquisitor over there and since they aren't PvP uh, space a lot of people can go through them and by farming out the anomalies around those base those base ones you get inquisitors and scouts to spawn quite readily and quite easily and that's how a lot of people have been farming inquisitors and scouts and that's where they've been getting a lot of uh, elite gear that's where a lot of players have been making a lot of uh, isk uh, okay it's uh, improved the game client rendering so in other words a lot of players have been having this long time to um, process the image or to get into any activity and that long processing time has been reduced uh, I literally went through something like that there uh, yesterday I was having a lot of fun playing around with T7 uh, uh, anomalies not anomalies T7 um, encounters and I was doing an elite with my um, naval vessel and I just flew right through it in less than 30 minutes I felt that it was too boring I wanted the elite to give me some uh, challenge so i swapped out to one of my uh what's this thing one of my trainer vessels and i took on the anomaly now regularly on those uh those encounters sorry not anomalies on those encounters it would take me something like two hours 30 minutes to complete it but for some reason the sector that i was in was very laggy and rendering in of the fleet took at least one minute each time I walked to it, even though I was less than two astronomical units away. Considering the speed your vessels travel at, two minutes is way too long, so they've tried to reduce those um, inefficiencies in the game, giving you better rendering. Also means that your ships look more, um, more appealing, and you can see more detail in them. Okay, uh, they've updated the estimated prices in the market. This is because prices in the market have been climbing steadily, and when you go straight into the market and you try and put something for sale, it's giving you the estimated price first. So they're trying to adjust it with the uh, player base. Okay. Uh, while on autopilot, busy systems will be avoided. So to prevent people from getting uh, stuck in the gate by Jita or uh, Pictor or a Mars space, they now allowing the autopilot to immediately deviate you from any sector with high traffic. So maybe the moment it reaches 800 or 900, it's immediately going to deviate you around to get away from those heavy traffic spots so that you don't end up being one of those guys stuck at the gate waiting for the gate to open again. Okay. The trade lock won't be triggered for, for account contracts which are under the same account. Okay. Sliding function is now supported when switching tabs on the overview list. Okay. Now, if the player loses connection in Cosmic Anomaly, ship will try to warp out. Okay, this is something else that happened. One of the nights, I don't know if the server is worldwide or just within uh, my country or within the Southern Hemisphere, but uh, the game was totally laggy. I was in the middle of encounters and I was lucky to walk away and dock at a station. And then I was lucky to get back on just to try and switch on my autopilot. It took me about two hours to autopilot back to base. And that's because the game was so laggy. And every few minutes I'd be kicked out of the game and it just kept doing that. Now, when spikes like that happen, it's generally an area thing or it's generally your device. But considering that a lot of players were complaining on our Discord group as well, that they weren't able to get back in and the ship was left in the middle of a mining field in low sec, that's why I think they've put these things in action. 
So the moment you disconnect right now in anomalies, you're going to move away. And for the mining, when you when you get disconnected after a few seconds, it warps you away to empty space. Okay, so moving on. Added the entry 4.8.7, the first disruption of wormholes to the Concord's Guide to New Eden. Specifically, players who experience the maintenance on August 26 will receive a commemorative stamp for their entry. Now, we were supposed to receive medals. That's what we were promised. I don't know if the medals are also coming through with this. Okay, improved AI pirates target switching efficiency. Now, a lot of players have been complaining about it. The pirates have terrible aim and they take long to switch between targets and that's something which they shouldn't be doing. You should be able to kite them and take aggro off them very easily. Okay, added a limit to the number of module special effects that can be shown in the same scene. Okay. So, um, basically, uh, the Norse, the Caltrop, the Webifier, all of those um, effects have been overloading the screens and that's also contributing to the lag. So certain um, enemies run too many of these effects and they reduce your frame rate in the game, basically. If you're using it on a PC, it drops your frame rate. If you're using it on a phone, it lags you out because your phone really can't drop frames all that easily when it comes to games. So it just lags you out of the game instantly when too many things happen at once. Okay. Guest accounts have been banned from transaction. They will, they will need to link their accounts before, the, before using the feature of trade. Uh, adding a commemorative stamp related to server breakdown on 26th. Added warning confirmation for locking allies. Okay, now this is something that a lot of players have been complaining about. Because of a lot of uh, times, allies have been turning grey for no reason on the map. And when you start the lock, you're turning into a red for them because you're basically attacking an ally. And that is not something that you need to have. So the moment you touch a grey and it's actually an ally, now you're going to get the warning you are attempting to lock onto an ally. Most probably will allow you to cancel doing it immediately. Okay, uh, guest accounts need to carry out account linking before they can transfer supplies. Players will receive confirmation when the autopilot route includes low sec or dangerous systems in the navigation. Added notification for when players resource extraction container is stolen. Changes have been made to some entries in Concord Guide to New Eden. Added stages 8 and 9 to advanced missions. Added on option on the fleeting page to enable, disable, equal uh, bounty distribution among fleet members. So, if you have someone in your fleet who you're trying to help out, this is something that could be used to help you out very quickly. You go into uh, an anomaly. Like I said before, with the anomalies and the amount of ISK you can make over the, the higher levels, if you're fleeting on a T7, uh, provided you're doing uh, sufficient damage and you're fighting it, you can make around a million ISK per um, T7 anomaly in low sec. Now, if you decide to go in with a full fleet and you're not getting hits in, your ISK is much lower. Now, that million which you were gaining, let's say it was two of you at equal rate, that means it was actually two million. Now, you take the two million and you break it up by 10 players, it's 100,000 each. It's now going to be distributed equally if you choose that option. Okay. Added an, a feature for issuing maintenance support rewards. So there might be a new um, tab or a new uh, slot inside our menu where you get maintenance rewards. So that's where you're going to get everything from the weekly maintenance. Um, player's choice of transportation from the previous order will be remembered for their next order. This is to deal with the interstellar delivery because every time you select to purchase something from a station, it immediately goes to interstellar delivery. If you can purchase faster, that means you have more time for other things in gameplay. Okay, added a portal for selling Plex on the market page. Uh, I didn't know that there wasn't a tab. Okay, 
After completing the pilot cultivation program, players can enable monthly cumulative login rewards. Okay, so my, uh, the pilot cultivation program is something new and the cumulative rewards is your daily login rewards. So once you've completed this um, program, you can now just go straight in and collect your daily rewards. I'm going to find out about it in a few minutes when I log in after this um, review. Okay, change the name of the login rewards to pilot cumulative program. Also, the process for claiming the reward game client has been simplified. Okay, so previously there was a Concord reward box. It was very simple. You just had to click claim for your uh, daily rewards and you had to click, click uh, claim for your Omega rewards. Okay. Edi added a notification to let players know when they forgot to load their shipping containers. Okay, when you go around uh, picking up things for deliveries, if you are one of those players who has a big hauling ship, and you taking like five or six deliveries, you're holding three, four hundred million ISK. Sometimes when you add a station and you've already accepted the mission, uh, the delivery mission, whichever you want to call it, you don't get the stuff automatically loaded in. So if you forget to load it, it's going to give you a warning that you've forgotten your crates. So you can use that as a way to make sure you don't forget anything when you're moving around. Change the button order on the player business card which can be accessed by tapping player avatar in the contact list on private chat. Okay, so in the private chat now you can open the player's um, uh, business card. Previously in private chat you couldn't open the player's business card and uh, make them a permanent contact if it wasn't someone who you knew. The combat uh, log page now contains more content. Okay, so the combat log page now it's probably going to give you more description on how you were defeated and what defeated you. Players now can change their name and avatar. So if you started off with a Kaldari um, man with the metal plates all over your face, you can now change to another avatar and you can change your name in game. Uh, I don't think that's a good idea for changing the name freely. I think there should be a limit and I think it should be very restricted because you're going to get players who are going to uh, troll other corporations and they're going to use the names of other players to make things difficult and it's going to cause problems. Okay. Corporations are allowed to change logo, name and corporation ticker. Um, okay. So same thing for corps. They can now change their names and logos. Market order display has been adjusted for th from 30 days to 7 days. Okay, estimated price will display in the market list. All right. Okay, so everything now has been made a little bit simpler so that players don't get caught out in the market. I'm not going to go over every single one of these. Some of these are a bit self-explanatory and some of these are already things that I, uh, okay, some of these are things that I haven't seen, and that's why I'm not going over them. Uh, this is longer than I thought it would be. I thought I'd get done with this in less than five minutes. Uh, okay, so overall, this is everything that we have on this uh, current um, this current uh, system. So a lot of players have been raising up the levels of their bases in their sectors to level one and three. And they have been keeping it low so they get inquisitors and they get cheap and easy to get um, elite gear. So if you're fighting in Kaldari space, you can get a warp disruptor. You can get afterburners, missile launchers, and if I'm correct, torpedo launchers um, efficiently in those inquisitors. If you're in a Mars space, there's the whole load of um, um, elite equipment that you get. If you're in Minmata, it's the shield hardness. It's, uh, let's see, what else was in Minmata? Shield hardness. I'm not exactly sure. I think it's the Norse device. I'm not 100% sure on that. But all of those spawn with regards to each, um, each uh, faction. So if you were going hunting for elite gear and you only farmed in Kaldari Inquisitors, you were never going to get all the elite gear you wanted. You have to go over to the next. Like Galliant, if I'm correct, drops the shield extenders. 
And these are the things that I've chased all the time, so I know about them. And Gallant also drops um, rail guns. Now, one of the others will drop rapid missile launchers. In a Mars space, I'm not sure what it was that I was picking up from the uh, elites. I think it might have been damage controllers. I'm not 100% sure. And I haven't taken on uh, Inquisitor or um, a Scout in a Mars space as yet. So that is one thing I haven't exploited for myself. I haven't been able to get uh, gear from their section for my uh, commander. Most of my gear is farmed and then I will sell it on the market in place to purchase another piece of gear. Now, there was a complaint made against me for uh, basically not owning vessels when I'm making the build videos. Now, here's the whole reason why I make those build videos without holding the vessel. Example, the Stabber, the Vexer, uh, the Caracal, uh, basically the cruisers that I covered, all of them. I actually did have the opportunity to purchase all of those Navy issue ships and trade them back to the owner. But the whole reason why we didn't go ahead with it was uh, we noticed something when it came to swapping around within the vessels that we owned when we, when we changed weapons. Uh, two of us had Caracals. The one, the one player had um, already gone into st uh, the stabber and he had the research and the weapon for it. And when he explained to me the difference in power, that's how come I didn't continue with it. So it's something that you can't compare uh, when you have the vessel. That's how come I don't use them. I'm just giving this at the end of the video because it's a little bit of a complaint that I received. The reason why it doesn't show up that I buy every single vessel is because it's of no use to me. If I own a stabber at the moment, even with the best fittings, it might not even beat a missile launcher on the same vessel because I have advanced level five coming up on it. And once I have advanced level five completed, I'm gonna open expert. And if I have expert missiles and a vessel that doesn't benefit from uh, the missiles, the missiles are gonna be stronger than the weapons on that vessel that it's supposed to have. And that's why I'm not purchasing every single vessel at the moment. Later on, once I've completed all my expert research in my uh, main weapon class, so missiles, when I complete all my small, all my medium, all my large, I'm gonna do drones. Once all my drones are complete, I'm gonna go down to decomposers or lasers. I actually want to go to laser weapons. And then I'm going to do the rest of them. That's gonna be the order in which I'm going to learn. And the reason is those are the weapons that interest me. So anybody who's going forward with the channel wondering what's coming next, the book is ready. I have received it on email, so it's digitized. Now the thing is, the author said that he might be writing for today, so he's not gonna put it up on Wattpad. So I'm just waiting for him to launch it. That is coming out in terms of um, content that is not uh, game specific, but it's extra content for the game, just something for fun. And someone made a suggestion that I put video art up for my videos. So for some of the thumbnails, I might try and get uh, some fan art. If anybody has fan art and they want to send it to me, um, look down in my uh, 100 million ISK uh, fleet video and you will find that uh, I have a Discord link there. Enter into the Discord, join it, and say you want to send me art, I'll accept it over Discord and I can easily upload it onto my video and it will be my thumbnail for my videos. So I know there's a bit of a process, but uh, that's the best I can do. Okay, so that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you all for subscribing. Uh, every single one of you have subscribed, thank you so much. Everybody who's liked, thank you so much. All of the criticism, I absolutely understand it. Even though I may have argued against some of their criticism, it's absolutely useful. I can explain why I don't purchase them and do it because it's a pointless video in other words. I can show you a stabber with less power than your stabber and you have just the basic research and you're gonna wonder what in the world is going on with the difference in the vessels. You might think that it's weak because of my video. It might change your uh, perspective on where you're going. That's how come I do my best pulls the way that I do. Okay, so <laughs> I will just say thank you again and goodbye.